To begin our analysis, let us take up the storyline in 1917, the year of the Bolshevik Revolution of October 25, Julian, or November 7th, Gregorian. By this time, many of the European, Middle Eastern, and Asian nations were in ruins from World War I. The Treaty of Versailles began being negotiated, 1919, long before the end of combat operations was officially declared, 1922. It was already being drafted by political planning committees staffed by the wealthiest bankers in 1917. This planning body was called, at the time, the Inquiry. Quote, the Inquiry was a study group established in 1917 by Woodrow Wilson to prepare materials for the peace negotiations following World War I. The group, composed of around 150 academics, was directed by presidential advisor Edward House and supervised directly by philosopher Sidney Mises. The group worked from the premises of the American Geographical Society of New York. Mises' senior colleagues were geographer Isaiah Bowman, journalist Walter Lippmann, historian James Shotwell, and lawyer David Hunter Miller. Others included James Truslow Adams. Members of the inquiry, now named American Commission to Negotiate Peace, traveled to the Paris Peace Conference in 1919, accompanying Wilson aboard the USS George Washington to France. The members would later form the Council on Foreign Relations. End quote. Now, before we can begin to discuss the CFR, Council on Foreign Relations, we must briefly also view the transitionary era during the drafting of the Treaty of Versailles, which also created the League of Nations, precursor to the modern UN, on June 28, 1919. Thus, even if the inquiry group's intentions were benign diplomacy, it appears that by the time their boat reached French shores, they were hell-bent on ruling the world. We see the original membership of the inquiry group, academics, philosophers, philanthropists, geographers, journalists, historians, lawyers, etc., was quickly replaced by far more pro-war hawkish interests once they arrived to represent the U.S. and President Woodrow Wilson's 14-point plan. Quote, the American Commission to Negotiate Peace, successor to the inquiry, participated in the peace negotiations at the Treaty of Versailles, January 18th through December 9th, 1919. Frank Lyon Polk headed the commission in 1919. The peace conference was superseded by the Council of Ambassadors, 1920-1931, which was organized to deal with various political questions regarding the implementation of provisions of the Treaty of Versailles at the end of World War I. Members of the commission appointed by President Woodrow Wilson included Clive Day, an American college professor and writer on economics history at the University of California, Donald Page Ferrari, an American college professor with Yale University, an expert on international affairs and author who served as a secretary to Edward M. House. Edward M. House, a diplomat, politician, and presidential foreign policy advisor to President Wilson. Vance C. McCormick, an American politician and prominent businessman from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Sidney Edward Mises, an American philosopher and college professor, former president of the City College of New York, and Charles Seymour, an American college professor at Yale University. End quote. As we see now, the pro-war, hawkish globalist's perspective superseded the originally more diplomatic mission as it was intended by President Wilson. By this point, Wilson himself had become disenchanted with the political processes at the negotiations over the Treaty of Versailles and left the conference in February 1919 
to return to the U.S., placing Colonel House in his seat at the Round Table Council of Ten. Although they had been longtime friends, House betrayed Wilson's soft-hearted stance on reparations from Germany and imposed, instead, the heavy-handed sanctions on them that bankrupted the German economy and led to the rise of the Third Reich and the fomenting of a Second World War. The resultant treaty was so odious to Wilson's own original vision that the final wording was never passed into ratification by the U.S. Senate. The U.S. never officially joined the League of Nations that U.S. President Woodrow Wilson had idealized in his 14 points. Instead, the plotting of globalist political interests took the economical route to achieving its ends in the USA.